Welcome to another episode of the Startup Junkie podcast. My name is Caleb Talley, Director of Marketing for Startup Junkie. Uh, we are joined by our usual co-host, Jeff Emrine, and hey, our, our um, guests of honor today, Brian and Bianca of Beyond the Tap. All right, let's hear it. Tell us about Beyond the Tap. Uh, Go ahead, well, Brian. Sure thing. So uh, we are a podcast dedicated to the wonderful men and women that are crushing it in the craft beer, wine, and spirits game. Um, we, we basically, we, we don't discriminate. We love it all. So uh, we love all of our local brewers, uh, vintners, distillers, and it's a, it's a great opportunity for them to come on and kind of just tell the public who they are, uh, where they come from personally and as a brand, and, uh, and just share kind of the great things that they're doing within the adult beverage space here in Northwest Arkansas, because we've had a ton of growth over the last five years, and I think it's time other people know about it. And I uh, am privy to a little bit of the, uh, I guess, the, the birth story of Beyond the Tap, uh, given that uh, it was at a 1 million cups, I guess, right, that really it started to take shape. And for those of you who are not familiar with 1 million cups, it's a uh, product of the Kauffman Foundation where uh, and there's 180 chapters across the country where entrepreneurs have the opportunity to present to the community uh, about what they're working on for the opportunity to get feedback from uh, their peers, from people in the community. Uh, and so with that background, go ahead and tell us, Brian, how that, that came to be at a One Million Cups. Yeah, so uh, it was last November of uh, 2019. Um, and I tell you, uh, I had actually been friends with uh, Zach Yield for a little while, and um, he, he runs a local studio here in Bentonville, and um, I'll tell you, I just, I heard him speak, and he was chatting about wanting to grow their, kind of their niche content markets, and uh, I said, hey, man, I've got this idea I've been sitting on for, you know, a couple months now. Uh, I just can't figure out how to make it happen myself at the, the quality that I want, and um I, I think you guys might be a good fit for this and I'll never forget the two words that changed everything was I'm in. Um, and so he, he said he, he jumped in, I pitched him on it and everything. And um, very shortly after that, it was 110 days later, actually uh, we recorded our very first episode of the podcast uh, full set and everything. Uh, we were able to, uh, that you built. Don't Hey, that. it was fun and it was very heavy wood. Uh, if you've seen our show, you know that I'm not joking. That wood actually comes out of uh, uh, semi-trailers, uh, thanks ah, to cool. one of our uh, incredible local sponsors here, EcoVet Furniture. Um, great supporters of what we're doing, and uh, they've just been so generous with everything. So, so that's not so wallpaper. Yeah. It's not wallpaper. It is real <laughs> wood. Real wood. <laughs> It, it the the entire set if we just uh, weighed the wall by itself it would be at least sixteen hundred pounds. Wow. So um, holy smokes! Bongo and I just pray every single time that we're recording that uh, nobody leans on it from the back. I mean, that would hurt. So Bianca, would, how'd you how'd you get pulled into this beer drinking extravaganza? Yeah. I love this story because evidently Zach Hild and Brian were going through a list of cool women that they knew. And uh, I guess the conversation was like, what about her? Well, maybe, I don't know. What about her? And then they're like, what about Bianca Montoya? And uh, they're like, she runs a ladies beer club. She loves beer. She's kind of charismatic. Let's go with her. And then of course they, uh, they send me a message and I immediately was like, I'm in. So, so you're so on the short list of cool women of Northwest Arkansas. <laughs> I guess so. Thanks guys for, for thinking of me. <laughs> Lots of good qualifications, but top on the list was runs the ladies beer club, I suspect, right? Yeah, I think that so. Definitely helped. <laughs> yeah and not to forget my uh i don't run it by myself i have a spearhead named rachel sizemore she's amazing and uh we can't wait to get things going again once things get a little safer very cool and how many episodes have you run so far Oof. so we actually, we actually just released episode seven uh <laughs> yesterday uh as of the time of recording this uh, which would have been uh, July, uh, was it 16th, I guess? Yeah. Uh, we released episode seven. Um, that actually featured New Province, uh, Derek McEnroe from New Province, brewing up in Rogers. Uh, we were able to sit down with him, and they're just 
they are doing some wonderful things there too. Um, everyone that we've sat down with, it, there's not an episode that I have not enjoyed. Um, and a few great surprises along the way too, of, uh, of, of different beverages and, um, you know, flavors and everything, just some of the, the cool stuff. So, um, we've got one more episode, uh, to launch next week. And, uh, we've also got a few to record next week. So we're keeping moving uh, it's from six feet apart, you know, that's so really cool. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No, no, you got it, Caleb. Well, You're I was just going to say, uh, if, are y'all recording like, so I know Zach and, and his team do their uh, shows kind of like in seasons. Are y'all planning to do seasons or y'all just going to roll out every week? What's the game plan for that? Well, it's funny you ask that because that's kind of been a morphing situation for us. Uh, we started out thinking there would be multiple seasons. Uh, right now we're, we're uh, nearing the end of what would be season one, uh, which was the initial 12 episodes. Um, you know, I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure whether we're going to break it apart by seasons or, or what, but I think there's a good chance of that, uh, continuing in uh, those kind of those breakable sessions, uh, and segments there that, you know, you'd be able to reference, you know, season one, season two, and, and find your favorite brewers or, or distillers or wine, your wineries, anything in there. Um, so there's definitely, uh, there's definitely a lot more to come. We've had some great responses from not only our Northwest Arkansas community, but folks as far as Little Rock, uh, Kansas City, Springfield, Tulsa, uh, they, they're, all, they're all interested and intrigued by what we're doing. Uh, and, and we just want to support the local folks. So that's, you know, if anybody's watching this and you run a, a brewery uh, or a winery or anything, reach out. We'd love to have you on our show. Send your samples. Yeah. Send samples. You make, <laughs> you make some discerning judgments. So, so you've been through seven episodes, you know, and I, and I'm a, I'm a, it's not, it's no secret. We talk about beer and cider and whatever else on every episode, regardless if it has anything to do with it or not, because that's the way we roll. This, our whole podcast was created as an excuse to drink beer on a Friday afternoon. And then a hope that maybe we talk about some stuff that was engaging. But having said that, what's the most surprising beer, wine, or spirit you've had so far where you thought, I don't know about this, but I really love it. What's the most surprising <laughs> one so Ryan, far? Ryan, I wonder if our answers are the same. I was going to say the big vodka. Ooh, big yeah. vodka. That's cool. It's so good. It was some Macon and Carson. Um, yeah. what, would, what were you going to say, Brian? I mean, to me, honestly, so I, I've been here in the area since 06, and um, I've seen some stuff start and go and grow, and um, I, I got to be honest, one of the initial brewers at Core Brewing, yeah. they have just absolutely blown me away, and they've added on recently their, their uh, sparkling seltzers, oh, yeah. and they, those were really tasty. So even, so even for a, a guy with a beard like this, I would still drink it with my pinky out. I'm just saying. Yeah, and they're not your normal <laughs> seltzers. Uh, these are like, because you'll notice that some of the bigger brands, it's like black cherry, lime, grapefruit. Theirs are so complex. It's like hibiscus. Uh, it was like hibiscus lime and like, what was another one that was weird? It was like coriander. And yeah. they're, they're, they're very complex and they're very Ginger tasty. cucumber and yeah. Yeah, and they're under yes. 100 calories, which is also unheard of. Um, but yeah, they're really good. I agree, they are, that's my second. Yeah. I'll tell you though, if you, uh, if you get into that Macon and Carson fig vodka, their brandy is wonderful, <laughs> which is what they're known for. Yeah. We and were that, toasty that at the end of that sneaky. episode. Yeah, <laughs> that, that stuff hit us hard. It was very tasty. <laughs> that, that's actually the episode where Bongo uh, coined the phrase, uh, we like it sneaky. Um, what did I say? <laughs> what did you, you don't say? remember, I ain't saying it again. <laughs> no. Yeah, I feel like this is what's funny and interesting about having this podcast is that, you know, we're trying all these different spirits or craft beers or wine and you know, I think that just because we're so passionate about it, it's like, yeah, I want to try everything. And I really, and like, if I really like it, which I've liked everything for the most part, um, you know, you just kind of start to take it in. So by the end of the episode, I feel like my demeanor is a little more loose. <laughs> <laughs> Your jokes are always better and at least more yeah. entertaining to you by the end of the podcast. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think I'm hilarious. Our producer is, uh, yeah, our producer is like, to, so we sit there with our computers in front of us and our producers will guide us in moments if they think that we're missing something or to bring it in. Um, and so, yeah, I think sometimes they set me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't ever, it, it's mostly to keep me from going on a tangent. There you yeah. go. I was, I was going to say for years, uh, Caleb and for him, Michael Eisman have to be the adult supervision because they don't <laughs> have any yeah. idea where I may end up going into this stuff there that's totally nonsensical. But that's, that's what the makes best it part. fun, right? Yeah. yeah, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Exactly. So let's talk barrel aged. Who who has a favorite in the barrel aged world where you kind of get that nose of the whiskey or the bourbon or something and then it's complex and any barrel aged fans out Hawk there? Moth, man. Yeah. You think so, Brian? You agree? I think Hawk Moth has been crushing it. Okay. And uh, one that we actually had um, that kind of surprised us uh, with, with New Province, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they did a barrel-aged uh, apple pie, and it's got some cinnamon to it. And it's, so it's That's got so that good. very yeah. strong note to it. But, oh, my goodness, so rich. He used, uh, I think he used Four Roses barrels. I get them confused. He might have used Four Roses or... Nope. Uh, Makers. Makers, yeah, I knew it was one of those two. Wow. Yeah. Yep. The thing that's so cool about the barrel age is the nose, because you feel like you're about to drink whiskey or bourbon or whatever it is, and yeah. then it's it's something different. But and you also have to be careful too, because those are <laughs> like twelve or thirteen percent alcohol typically. <laughs> so how do you know? It was interesting actually that you say that we we have found some really um, very distinct flavors uh, within you know, the, the different, like the barrel age and the different kinds of, even the, the um, sparkling uh, seltzers and everything. What was interesting to me was the, uh, the barrel age one that I referenced a second ago from uh, New Province. I think he said it was only like a 6.8 or something like wow. that, which was wow. for a barrel age. It wasn't much, um, but it was just, that was so good. And then you have other ones that you wouldn't realize uh are you know eight nine ten percent and you're like oh that Ooh. makes sense <laughs> i can remember ma speaking of the barrel age the medusa that bike rack does i had uh, the imperial salt which is pretty it's pretty good and it, nine percent beer it's it's pretty high up there and and hopefully the label matches what it actually is but i had two of those mm -hmm. bef before i had to give a presentation and i don't remember a single word that i said 100%. in the presentation it, I think it was okay. I, I was just, <laughs> you know, immensely relaxed, but two is one too many. Oh yeah. Those, in fact, that's the cutoff that they have. They're yeah. like, you can only yeah. have two, but, and sorry, bike rack, but a friend of mine had once brought one to me. So then I had three and I ex experienced the same thing. I had the best night though. <laughs> <laughs> it's good anesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> so are y'all still at the point where y'all are reaching out to the uh, breweries and the vintners or are they asking to be on the show yet? Are they begging for airtime yet? I, I think we're starting to reach the point where we've, we've been approached by a couple, um, but I think it, in a general sense, we're still reaching out. You know, we're still yeah. finding um, the, the folks. There's actually uh, one that uh, I won't give away their name yet, but I know they're from uh, Fort Smith and I know they are uh, excited to come on the show in August. Uh, we're actually going to record an episode with them. I just got confirmation today. Um, and it was, it's really cool because when I connected with them, they had only been open one week um, as wow. a group. Wow. And so uh, we, we love sharing those stories as well uh, because obviously uh, not to, not to crush that whole evergreen thing, but to say like right now at the time of this, we're kind of, on that, you know, we've been in COVID session for a while. So it's like, well, how, what's it like to open a brewery during a crazy time like this? And um, yeah, oh, sorry, these unprecedented times. Is that is that what I should be saying? <laughs> um, Perfect, <laughs> great. Despite the circumstances. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, we, we love hearing those stories. And so we're, I'm excited to have them in. And um, yeah, we've got some just, like you say, we're, we're reaching out a lot right now, um, but also we, you know, I feel like more and more people are starting to hear. Uh, we're getting some good responses on our social media and uh, views are going up all the time, which was, which was just a dream for me. So I know uh, I can, I know I can speak for Bianca too. It's just, um, it's been a lot of fun and it's only getting started. Honestly, I feel like we've learned a lot too. I noticed that in some of our, like we're getting better at our flow 
and yeah. our banter. And I feel like if you watch our first episode and then watch our last episode, you'll see a major difference. I and mean, that's kind of cool at yep, like yep. Growing Pains. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 it is awkward AF, I'm just saying. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is. When everybody gets into this initially, it's like, oh, my God, I hope nobody <laughs> listens to episode one <laughs> or two. Yeah. So, so you get you get better as you go, and it becomes more yeah. comfortable, and the whole the whole thing is is different and, and whatnot and better. And, so, question is, you bring on these people that are really into beer or wine or whatever. Are you going to go the route of bringing on cicerones and sommeliers and those folks that can kind of give you the kind of snobby expert view of a lot of this stuff, or is it going to be mostly the 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 owners and the brewmasters and those type of folks? You know, I think only time will really tell. Um, as of right now, we're sticking we're sticking with our lane of, of the folks that are behind the scenes every single day. Um, I know that uh, one thing that we're talking about is uh, we do have a Patreon page. Uh, if people decide they absolutely love us and want to throw a couple bucks our way, uh, they can do that. And I know that as we grow out uh, more of our content and, and uh, as we mature a bit more, uh, we actually do have some plans to put some special content on there for subscribers that uh, maybe might be a deeper dive into uh, specific categories of, of alcohol or, uh, you know, if it's like you're mentioning a Cicerone or, uh, you know, a sommelier, someone like that, maybe perhaps doing some classes or things um, that, that really go deep for those people who want that kind of knowledge. Um, you know, one of the coolest things that we, that Bianca and I both see is that people are, they're learning uh, some different terms. I know I'm learning a ton of different terms that I was totally unfamiliar with. Um, and I definitely had no idea how many yeast strains there were out there, um, which if you've watched our show at all, you know, that's a common theme. I totally nerd out over that. And so I feel like a kid in a candy shop uh, talking about yeast strains. <laughs> well, Bradley on our show from Hawk Moth uh, says that he's been on a show in the past, and when he said yeast strains, that someone thought he was saying G strings. And so we <laughs> just laughed so hard about it because here he is getting really technical, and all of a sudden you're like, <laughs> Brought to you yeah. from Vegas, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, there are those funny moments. Uh, I told him it was going to be Kanye's new underwear line of yeast strings. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Kanye, I want ten percent of that, buddy. That's the same. Oh yeah. And and so yeah, as far as far as monetizing the podcast, do you think Patreon is where you will see the bulk of that coming from, or you know, do you think the bulk of that will come through sponsorships, or or what do you? envision for that i know right now we're actually working a lot on uh we're trying to get some sponsorships and trying to figure out i know first season uh we definitely just had some incredible folks uh including like i said eco vet furniture over in rogers uh seth uh from from growlers uh over at growler usa here in rogers uh, which is now actually during this entire time of us uh, of us recording season one he's actually paid his buyout for his franchise and he is now uptown kitchen and tap house so it's been really cool to see his brand grow and mature while we're doing the same um but thanks thanks to uh, again to ecovet and to growler or uptown kitchen tap house uh, and also we have our great friends over at tawny town winery and natural state beer company who have uh invested uh with us and and just you know got behind us and believe in what we're doing. Um, I think, you know, looking towards the future, there may be some opportunities on, you know, single, single episode sponsorships. Um, so, you know, a startup junkie wants to jump in. I'm just saying. <laughs> um, Nothing like an on-air solicitation. Hey, right? He's Brian. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's, there's opportunity. It, we call it a partnership, you know? It there really we go. <laughs> uh, but no, we, there, there's a lot of good opportunities coming up. And I think Patreon, uh, as we grow, will become a good backbone for us um, because we've had a lot of, like I say, great response from the community here locally. Uh, we actually, uh, I was informed recently that we've got uh, a few, a handful, I mean, literally like five to seven um, re repeat um, viewers from the Netherlands. And uh, and so, yeah, 
Yeah, I heard yeah. they like to drink there. Is yeah. That true? I've, I've heard there's a beer or two. So. <laughs> But, well, yeah, just like, a, just a heads up. Startup Junkie podcast is downloaded in ninety one countries, so just get ready. Right. Get ready for that influx of that's, that's right. Goal. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, and we welcome every single one of you countries <laughs> because uh, you know I I tell you it's uh, beer is a great equalizer for everybody, right? It's something it that is. we can all gather around and and celebrate. It saved the world on more than one occasion. And I know that's true because I've seen it on the History Channel. Yeah. <laughs> it has to be true. If it's on TV, it's got to be true. It's got to be true. That, you know, backed up by the internet, but it, it must be the real deal. I saw it in a meme. Hang on, one let time. me go edit my Wikipedia. There you, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, as, make ourselves a wiki page. As, as, yeah. you, as you all look at the industry, because I know you're, you're talking to a lot of people and interviewing a lot of people, and it's, it's been these really weird times that we've talked about. Uh, how do you see the, the breweries and the cideries and the, the, the wine uh, producers, how do you see them surviving through this whole thing? Because a lot of them, typical brewery that's got a tap room, 70% of their revenue comes through the tap room. Are, are, I mean, are you getting insights into some of the ways they pivoted towards delivery? And I'd just be interested in what you've, what you've heard and what you've learned so far in terms of how people are coping. Yeah. You want me to take it, Brian? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I will say I think um, I think it's cool that they were able. To, we, we heard from a few people that deliveries were really helpful. We also heard from some folks that you know can't like people who can and distribute like to like places locally. That's really been helpful. We've definitely seen both sides of that coin. Um, you know, from our friends down at, at uh, unfortunately uh, Black Apple. Um, you know, have, or not Black Apple Apple Cross. Uh, uh, of course, I would mess up on a podcast, right? Black uh, apple's still awesome. okay. They're apple still good. Awesome brewing. <laughs> there you go. Hey, yeah. you throw apples in there. It's I apple something, right? <laughs> no, apple blossom. You know, having um, to, having to unfortunately shutter their doors. Um, and I know that uh, actually speaking of black apple, um, they're coming on soon because thankfully they've been finally able to reopen their patio and uh, and get some of that. But like she said, uh, one of the one of the biggest things that we've repeatedly heard was how grateful um, that a lot of our of, of our brewing and distilling and, and winemaking friends um, have been for uh, Arkansas's uh, leadership really you know pivoting quickly to allow deliveries and pickups uh, in the in the fashion that they have. Um, it has definitely saved a lot of people's businesses. Sure. Um, by allowing beer delivery. Um, so that's, that's a great thing for them. You think it would um, be made permanent? Why, why not make that permanent? You know, I feel like that Arkansas leadership would be, um, they would be missing out huge in a huge way if they ever rescinded that. Um, not only from the revenues, but just because it does help support local communities. Um, uh, personally, I just, just knowing Let's be honest, you know, call it call a spade a spade. Um, if beer is brought to you in your home, uh, you are a lot less likely to be out driving um, exactly. after consuming. And so to me, I personally really believe in it because I think it, it's a great way to keep people off the roads. Um, it's a great way to reduce the amount of problems that could arise. And, um, you know, I'm just I'm excited to, to see that they have, you know, shifted in that way. And I really hope. Uh, that we can, as you know, Arkansas Brewers Guild and uh, different groups can rally around. I hope that they can influence leadership to make that a permanent move because, um, you know, it's it's definitely helped a, a variety of businesses and individuals. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that the the three part uh, you know regulation that's existed mostly since the prohibition doesn't make any sense i mean it's it's ridiculous yeah. and it and it needs to be torn down because all it does is bring in efficiency and bureaucracy and make it harder for the smaller players to be successful so the more they can tear that down the better delivery ought to be left in i believe and i would also say that I, i'd be interested in your thoughts on what you think about the outdoor refreshment area deal that got approved in fayetteville the idea that they'll, there can be allowed seven days a week between 10 a.m and 10 p.m uh, drinking essentially and you've got to have a special cup and all that but they're trying to make it so that 
you, you can responsibly drink and not have all these ridiculous rules that date back again to the prohibition. Yeah. Um, on my honest thoughts on it, I'm very curious. Uh, I think my, my own inner jury is still out. Um, I think that it can be a great saving grace for some of those local businesses, um, especially Dixon Street and, and kind of those areas that right now they, they, they thrive in their normal day to day uh, from groups of people coming out. And since we can't do that right now, there's no, there's no dancing, there's no clubs, there's no, uh, you know, masses of, of people able to gather. So if you can take a drink and uh, stay within a certain proximity and, uh, and, and, you know, certain restrained area, um, I, I feel like that's okay. Uh, a lot of other cities have gone before and they have shown that it's possible. Um, obviously there's kind of what I would feel like growing pains that will most likely happen. Sure. Um, they're, they're probably going to have to slap a few wrists, uh, to, to try and, you know, make sure people understand, uh, what is and is not allowed. Uh, but I feel like that's with anything. I feel like that's with, you know, whether we're wearing a mask or driving a car with a seat belt or anything else. Um, I feel like there's always a period that's needed to kind of, retrain and and understand limits um you know Learning i think on the risk them. yeah on the risk side i feel like yeah there's there's probably going to be a few problems that arise um and they're going to catch some stuff that maybe they didn't uh fully think through whenever they uh in it you know instated it but i personally i think that it's gonna the positives are going to outweigh the negative by far and i think it's going to additionally help uh, save some local business and, uh, you know, generate that revenue that is so desperately needed right now. Yeah, I, the, I agree. A lot of those private clubs, I mean, the private club didn't really get the lifeline that the brewery, uh, and those other places did with the delivery, uh, situation. So it's kind of like, you know, their lifeline at this point seems yeah. like. Now I will say on that line, uh, I was, I was very pleasantly surprised to see, uh, there was a group up in Kansas city, uh, not too far from us here that, um, that during all of this, they have been enabled to take mobile daiquiris and margaritas to people now. Um, Why not? So right. I feel like if there was somebody who could come up with a taco and margarita truck, uh, that would drive around like the ice cream trucks do, by all means, uh, sign me up and I will let you set up in my front yard sometime. It would kill. It would kill. And in fact, you know, it's because we're concerned about social distancing and about the mask and all that. Somebody needs to come up with sort of a, a shoulder mounted bio suit that's got a camel back attached that can just be snap fitted in and you've got yeah. the, the drink hose. And so yeah. you don't have to, you don't have to breathe on anybody. And you can just swap this camel back in and out as you go from place to place. And yeah. you know, I mean, if you've watched, if you're a fan, I really love your background. And if you're a fan of SpongeBob SquarePants, <laughs> Sandy has lived forever at Bikini Bottom with a bubble over her head. And she seems to be pretty happy most of the time. So I'm thinking somebody's got to do that, right? Or even yeah. if it's just the face mask where you just pour one can into your face mask, doesn't have to be a camel bag, you know, just. So exactly. that face mask, it's got, you know, the equivalent of or, one can in or, it. Or, or, you know, or yeah. the hat that's got that. I was just going to say that. Insane. You know, it's, if, if you had the hat, like one of the wide brim uh, safety helmets from, you know, that you can buy at a, a hardware store, put uh, put your beer cans on there with the hose and then get your face shield, yep. that clear face shield that goes on. I mean, you're set right there. So yeah, the, I'm the thinking it's a, it's a business idea. I'm, I'm, somebody yeah. ought to do that. If somebody, shield, starts it, say if, give, yeah. <laughs> if, if somebody starts that and takes this idea and runs with it, please just sponsor Beyond the Tap and, and start up <laughs> somehow. Here, Love it. Well, it, um, you know, you mentioned sponsorship. Watching one of your episodes previously, I think it was the one with Hawk Moth. Um, mm -hmm. During the commercial break, one of the commercials was, if I remember correctly, um, y'all making a, uh, a cocktail, I think. Was it a sponsorship yes. with a, a, a spirit? In your, I mean, that's, that's got to be one of the best commercials that you could possibly have is to show people how to make a cocktail. Um, that's we the kind of sponsorship a, Startup Junkie can get behind, you know, if we can, you know, absolutely. Sip, sip on a cocktail. In our partnership that's one of the biggest <laughs> things too is is uh yeah is devil's river whiskey um they have been great 
Um, and, and actually, so they're from Texas. They're a Texas brand. Um, but Andy Crittenden, uh, he is here locally uh, in Northwest Arkansas. And he came in just before all of this hit. And uh, we were able to knock out uh, 11 different cocktails. Like I say, there's 12 episodes. I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen for that uh, 12th <laughs> one yet because that one's up our sleeve. Uh, but what I will say is Devil's River uh, did partner with us. And, yeah, they've, they've been great to work with. Um, and they provided that, that really simple two- to three-minute uh, cocktail. And so if you love cocktails, if you love exploring new flavors and everything, uh, Devil's River Whiskey, they have a, a barrel strength, they have a, a, a regular, and they have a rye. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's actually a product that I believe they still have not released yet, uh, which we've had the privilege of tasting, and it was delicious. Um, but all that said, um, you know, they, they Andy does really great uh, with knowing how to uh, simplify something that, you know, you, maybe you go to a bar uh, in a major city and you see it and the bartender is, he's got flair. He's got that, that, you know, distinct way that he makes it. Um, and Andy just really brings it down to a, uh, to a, to an understandable level, uh, which we love because we know that, uh, you know, the average person listening to our podcast is probably listening to it, uh, on their commute. And whenever they get home, they want something that doesn't take them 15, 20 minutes to set up and make and, and create. So, uh, you know, just the opportunity to enjoy those cocktails uh, quickly with what you already have at home uh, from a from a barware standpoint. It doesn't require all the fancy uh, measuring stuff. Uh, he breaks it down really easily. What I think is refreshing about that is that, you know, a lot of the podcasts I listen to, they're going to tell me, you know, in sort of a conversational tone about how they love their Casper mattress or, uh, you know, how <laughs> yeah. we should download the cash app or, you know, whatever. Um, and it's, I believe it's, there's a couple it's, expletives thrown in there before that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. You know exactly which one I'm talking about now. Uh, uh, it's just refreshing to have something that actually is providing an actual like value, you know, that's, you know, I could take away and, Oh, that's awesome. I actually want to go make a cocktail rather than, you know, I'm not going to go jump out and buy a Casper mattress, but if Casper mattress wants to sponsor us, I absolutely will. Um, I just think it's a refreshing <laughs> approach. <I'll sleep> on <laughs> it. <laughs> you could just uh, be more subtle, right? Like you could be sitting on the, the Casper mattress exactly. the episode or, have it in the background product placement or whatever. So yeah. it's a little more subtle. I work remote from my Casper mattress. <laughs> so Brian, what's, what's next, man? What's next? What's the, what's the next five years look like? You've gotten into this, you, you're off to a good start. What's the vision? What do you want it to be in five years? Uh, so to me, I mean, the sky is the limit. I know that we've definitely been having uh, some good talks with folks of uh, where we'd like to go. Um, I know part of where we want to go soon, uh, and I say this within uh, within a year of being active. Uh, so by by next March, we would love to do uh, a bourbon trail tour where we actually pit Kentucky against Tennessee. Uh, we would love to, and I I I, I was talking with Zach, and uh, he basically said he goes, you know, where do you? He asked me the same question. Where do you see this headed? And I said, I got to be honest, I, I'm very ambitious with this. Uh, I love to dream big. I love to throw it out there because if you don't have a goal, um, then, you know, it's just a good idea. But um, we can set a plan and work towards a goal. And so within the first three years, the hope and uh, the plan is to be uh, drinking some sake in Japan. Um, I also would love to go to an Oktoberfest and represent Northwest Arkansas uh, in Germany. And then, uh, you know, I'd love to to enjoy some of the different things that uh, different cultures have from a local uh, adult beverage culture. So uh, we really just want to expose people to the amazing things that are going here in Northwest Arkansas and take that out to the world and then bring the world right back here. Wow, oh, that's please a, bring that's, me with you. <laughs> yeah, I, that, that all sounded pretty good. I was getting all the mental images there and thinking, yeah, that's, that doesn't suck at all. That's a pretty good vision. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll tell you, I mean, we've we've had uh, not to give away too much, but to say we've we've had the idea uh, that we've just been tossing around. Uh, still in the market for a great local partner to make this happen, 
Um, but the idea that we would love to have uh, if a local bar uh, or, or brewery, uh, winery, distillery, anything like that, uh, if they would uh, love to partner up on having a space where we could set up our show and actually do some, uh, some live broadcasts from there, uh, we would love to have that and uh, be able to just bring our audience along uh, in real time to where they can watch us record an episode. They can have uh, a cocktail or a beer or whatever from the, the place that we're, uh, that we're promoting at that episode. And so, you know, if, uh, if the space comes available at the right price and uh, there's a partnership out there to be had, uh, we would love to have that because we are here in Northwest Arkansas. And while we may uh, spread our wings and kind of see uh, what other areas have, we're proud to be here. And uh, we love reaching out to the other communities and saying, hey, guess what's going on here? Uh, because a lot of the time when you say to someone, uh, hey, check out this wine, uh, it's from a place called Sassafras Springs, and they're like, oh, what part of Sonoma is that from? And we're like, no, it's from Arkansas. And they're like, really? Well, it can't be that good. And we're like, oh, no, it, it's meddled. It's, it's absolutely meddled in a, a, a you know, international uh, competition. Um, that's, that's a big thing. And so for us to be able to take Northwest Arkansas to the world, uh, that's just, that's huge. So, yeah, that's cool. If only we knew somebody in the beer cider business that had space that could be available. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> who, who do you I know, know that we could talk to? Maybe I might know it. I might know a guy. All right. I also well, think have, that sounds like people. Call my people. <laughs> I think that also sounds like a great, uh, reoccurring feature at every startup crawl from here on out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you can absolutely. Do it. You can do it. Right. You say the word and we'll be there. Word. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Caleb, but, I think we should land the plane. Yeah, let's land the plane. I really, I think what y'all are doing is incredible uh, for all the reasons you just mentioned, you know, really showcasing what Northwest Arkansas has to offer because it's not just a flyover part of the country. There's, there's a lot going on here. Um, there's a lot going on with the beer scene, the cider scene, the wine scene that a lot of people uh, just really don't realize. Uh, we're, we're pretty lucky. Um, but one way that we like to land the plane and I know, um, that it's kind of different since y'all just started. We usually ask, you know, what, what you would tell your younger self before you started your venture. Um, you know, what advice would you give your younger self? Is there something you would have told yourself eight months ago? <laughs> I'll say this. Uh, I just wish I would have followed. I, and this is, this is, I, I actually, funny enough, just had this conversation uh, with my team, my, uh, my production team there at Intercut um, this last week. Um, I think the biggest thing that I can say, and this is the deepest probably thing that I will say on this entire podcast, um, if you have an idea to do something like this, and I know it's goofy hearing this from a guy with a Simpsons background, but um, if you have an idea to do something like this, uh, you can make it happen. Uh, I wish I would have followed this dream five years ago, 10 years ago, um, but I also know I wasn't the right person at that time. So I think, you know, moving into this, uh, being, you know, the startup junkie, uh, I think one of the biggest things that I'm sure you guys deal with a lot uh, as, as different organizations approach you uh, trying to get started is just believe, believe in yourself, believe in your opportunity, your vision, um, know that whenever you find your voice and when we started talking about Beyond the Tap, um, the amount of support that just came out of the woodwork was overwhelming. Uh, it was unbelievable, and we are absolutely grateful uh, for every single one of our viewers and listeners and supporters uh, because this just stemmed out of out of uh, you know just two little simple questions that I had asked, and and um, you know it it has grown very quickly. Uh, like I say, it took 110 days from inception to uh, production, and I haven't counted the days since then. But I know that uh, March 26th is when we aired our very first episode, and um, it's been a it's been a rocket ride, I'll tell you. And if I remember correctly, that very first episode was was recorded on Startup Junkie Podcast equipment, right? It was. You guys <laughs> were absolutely <laughs> instrumental uh, in that because, yeah, we had uh, we were trying to find our feet. We were trying to figure out exactly how to do that um and and startup junkie you guys have been 
wonderful uh, as a support, not only to us, but other folks in our community, I know. And so thank you guys for everything you're doing to support small business and, and the little guy like me uh, who said, uh, you know, hey, how do we tell the story of these awesome folks? I mean, there's been 155, I think it is, percent growth in the last five years in the craft alcohol uh, scene in Northwest Arkansas alone. Um, I can't imagine where it's going to be in another five years. Uh, but, you know, the, the two questions was, how do we share those stories? And also, how do I get free drinks? Um, let's just be honest. So, uh, That's and it worked question. out okay. It worked out it, okay. It, it, it looks like it. It looks like it. So, if the audience wants to find out more, where can they find you? Where, where do they need to go to hear more about what you're doing? Absolutely. You can head over to our website at gobeyondthetap.com, uh, or you can find us on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform. We are on a broad variety of them. Uh, if you don't find us on your absolute favorite one, you should probably find a different podcast platform <laughs> that's maybe a little more knowledgeable. But if not, you can email us, call us, whatever, let us know, and we will make sure that we're on that one too. Uh, to Right now, just to name off a few, we are on Apple, Google Podcasts. Uh, we are on iHeartRadio. Uh, we, we are out there. So we've got quite a few places that you can find us. Uh, just go beyond the tap.com. We'll take you to our different links. Uh, we're highly active on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Thanks right, for coming the, on. The absolute final question, which the, you're going to be the first person to get this question as a Startup Junkie podcast guest, is um, what would be your recommendation for the title of this episode? Ooh, let me <laughs> see. Maybe take one down and pass it around. There we go. Love it. <laughs> Love is- it. I know the home. lyrics to that song. That is hey, you know song. what? I figure we're all in it together. And if you're taking one down and passing it around, everybody's going to get to enjoy. I Absolutely. love it. Awesome. Thanks, Brian. We'll we appreciate see it. Thank Take you, guys. It I appreciate all you're doing. You bet. Bye now. Bye.